Hello and welcome back. My name is Faye and you're with Your Heart's Path. We're going to jump straight into the collective energy reading for February today. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more fluid. I haven't made much of a blueprint. Uh, my guides just came in through meditation and said, can we pass on this transmission? So I'm guessing that the timing that this arrives uh, for you will be perfect and could potentially be applied to these later parts of January as well. Uh, as some of these aspects I sort of feel like we're already experiencing. So big happy new year to you. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here before, thank you for coming back. Let's jump into it, shall we? Um, I'm excited about this energy, but I do feel where this reading today is going to be helpful is that it's going to help with the precision that I feel is needed as to where we are focusing our energy at the moment. As there are sort of lots of different um places in your life that are potentially asking for your attention and it can be a little overwhelming to go I don't really know where I want to lean into right now the reason it can be tricky is because most of you here are going to have experienced or come to terms with a deeper truth that you either collected from your past or you've collected from these more sort of shadowy aspects that we've been journeying through it's like a deeper truth. A deeper truth has come to the surface. Uh, it could be many deeper truths in regards to where you are living. It can be relationship insights. It can be that you have recognized certain behaviors of yours are actually sabotage patterns. It can be that you are not enjoying something that you thought that you were. It could be that you realize that the career that you've just spent four years studying for is not actually what it is that you want to be doing in the future. What I love about these truths is that they're big. They've taken such a lot of courage to recognize and realize. So congratulations. And even if these feel like small little truths and insights, it's like, uh, I want to say the ripple of effect of these moments that we've had over the last six weeks is a domino effect that trickles into the future that has like a feedback loop of... Um, I just wish I could share that with you. It kind of like ripples into the future and the, the energy that comes back from that is a, a higher vibration that gets to manifest as deeper as a deeper sense of joy. And I feel like that's where this contemplation or the dive to receive these truths where you've gone inwardly over the last little while has come from because it's sort of like, oh, everything sort of seems like it's like it's in place. And I don't know why I'm not feeling like I thought I would or... I love where I'm living, but for some reason I feel curious and more expansive about thinking about somewhere else. Or I'm okay with my job, but I feel like I could do more, like I am capable of more, that I would desire to be more challenged than the real peaceful, easy, predictable lifestyle that I've created. Now, these are just examples but the epiphany or the insight or the discovering of this truth that you've so courageously and bravely brought into your awareness hasn't necessarily made it out into the physical plane as in like the actions have been taken in order to autocorrect course or perhaps you didn't leave the relationship or move countries yet or but this stream of contemplation that I feel is quite fragile and is asking for a sense of precision right now for it to work for you and for it not to confuse your reality or to speed things up unnecessarily is to really give you an opportunity to kind of look at this as more of a long-term vision or a plan. So what spirit really want to emphasize here, if this is resonating with you, is this almost like a pressure that can come with the acknowledgement of a truth and the almost building of the anxiety when worrying about the future or how you're going to get there or what you're going to do. I sort of sense that this is a cycle that is beginning. The course correction can take up to sort of six to eight months and that can be bringing this new awareness with this truth on the surface of um like it, it, it's like it comes into the lens of your reality now and it's a very felt experience it's not one of abandoning the body or the being just because you have an insight into something that you might like to change it, it does deeply kind of come with this anchor of i'm going to get really super curious so that i can be very particular 
in the steps that I take, which will probably come more intuitively than anything, and not overwhelm myself in the process of what is actually being asked of you from this um, state of awareness or state of being. And I see truth. It doesn't mean that what you have been experiencing was out of alignment. I really want to make that like super clear. This can be the closure of contracts. This can be timelines ending. This can be the entry into a brand new timeline. Um, this can be that you are ready to experience a higher vibration inside of your reality. And it's been a heavy time, a lot of discomfort inside of the body. And so the desire to lift up to be and to be able to hold this new awareness in your body and being with a sense of lightness to then be able to take quite fluid and intuitive action is what I see kind of bringing in a sense of harmony and allows for a little bit more joy in the simplicity of living. I don't know if I mentioned the mechanic because I'm in channel mode, but the mechanic was something that I bought in with um, this. Why do I always get that little dry patch of skin when I'm doing this reading it's so weird it doesn't normally <laughs> happen okay it's gone it only happens when i'm doing this the mechanic i kind of want you to imagine whilst it sort of seems a little bit robotic use your beautiful imagination to see your body like a car and if you this can metaphorically express to you which parts of your body want some attention to help lift your vibration right now uh, you can have some really awesome insight and I feel where there might previously have been a lot of resistance you'll be able to kind of jump in really easily because you're deeply connected to this truth now and it's kind of like a springboard that allows for more of this energy to come flooding into your life uh, which will show you how because right now we don't really know how we get from here to this new truth that we have kind of had a little bit of foresight into. Um, so the mechanic can be like detox. It can be, I'm water fasting right now and it's like, just feels like the right time to be doing this to kind of make some space. Uh, for you, it can be like cutting, um, turning your phone on like flight mode throughout certain periods of the day because you've recognized and realized that you're spending too much time in that um, the world of the internet. Uh, it can be that you are just done kind of sabotaging in a particular way. I can see kind of like addictions leaving right now, just like that. Like I'm not drinking before I go to bed anymore because it's disrupting my sleep and sleep is the most important thing because I need to be traveling in order to heal my body and my being. It can be these kinds of recognitions or realizations that you have um, that can create such a big impact right now. And I know that we have these like new year's, uh, like resolutions, so, like jump into the gym and, and sort of start, you know, we start kind of pivoting towards a uh, health. So I do feel like there is some energy around health, around vitality, around how you genuinely feel, how is your energy kind of flowing throughout the day. And so if you haven't been sort of continuously listening to the prompts of your intuition over the last while, then it's time to service the car, so to speak. And your car is different to everybody else's car. So just because I'm water fasting doesn't mean you need to be water fasting. I actually feel there's gonna be a whole variety of expressions of what this looks like, but it sort of feels like letting go of something or taking something away or stopping a certain particular, like a particular pattern behavior, or even something that we just naturally would normally do to lighten up the body and the being again, to connect more deeply with this energy of truth so as that your vibration is kind of on par with this reality that I feel like you've had insight into without getting overwhelmed. And this is where the juggling sort of thing starts to happen. And that's kind of one foot in both worlds. So I am going to emphasize presence. It is a constant practice. But if you are skimming over the surface, I can see like rocks being, you know, you skip stones over the surface of the water. If you've been sort of skipping over your mindfulness practice, you are going to start to, to know about that now. Our priorities need to get in order and it's all well and good to make goals and intentions. And I'm here for that as like New Year's resolutions. But I also feel like we need to start um, prioritizing discipline. Uh, and kind of this experience of like, well, it might not feel great to get started in this thing that's going to make me feel healthier and be happier, but it has to be done. Like it's inevitable. And I think that's what a lot of people have been experiencing is this kind of like spinning around in circles. So 
a beautiful opportunity for like some brutal honesty right now. Honesty with yourself and the time will come through February where this communication, it's like a key they're showing me, key to be able to communicate what's been going on internally and that might even be just your family members who are like, you've been acting really weird but I don't really know what's wrong with you. The words will come to be able to kind of express yourself um, so as that there is like a reconnection with your community, with your family, with those who are in your first sort of layers of your um, field. This can also be for people that are running businesses and things online. I think there's been like a build up of pressure as to like new ways of innovating and creating and letting it feel really authentic versus it feeling forced. And so maybe after a little detox of the internet, kind of coming back in with a fresh lens, you'll be doing this from more of an authentic place and the expression behind that will come through. So I really see like a big key around February. Uh, I'm going to say like the second and the third week around the voice. So if you've been struggling to get something out there, make sense of it so that you can communicate it that's where I feel like there's a lot of powerful energy coming through um and there is like a great emphasis around the throat I, I feel like we're going to be speaking new realities into existence I feel that that can go both ways so a beautiful time to open for new opportunities if you do want a new job great place to kind of open up uh, to that experience and in preparation of that period where we've got a huge activation of the throat chakra and hearing new truths but also expressing them uh, is this beautiful kind of experience of I want to say like putting some time aside to go into ritual I feel like that first week of February like go in this full moon that's coming this weekend go in it's like a very uh, rich and fertile ground to be planting seeds for essence manifestation what do I mean by that like I have decided I want to feel a little lighter inside of my body I'm planting that seed how does that look how does it feel what color is it for me what texture is it what animal represents that how can I embody that in my everyday life what actions do I need to take in order to experience that but the manifestation of that the essence or the seed planted is that seed of lightness raising the vibration i can see that as a focal point and it's in my awareness then for my day i've ritualized this energy by bringing potency and presence and attention by doing this in a sacred space and asking for the support of spirit which you can do too create ritual in your life to get really super clear with this new awareness you have of the future and the direction you've potentially been asked to pivot in and ask for an intention perhaps that's i and you don't have to ask for an intention, you can create an intention too from your heart. I intend to travel down this road really smoothly. I intend to open to new opportunities. Whatever it is for you, I feel like it's a potent time to go into ritual at that point. Um, and it's like very fast, there's a turnover. Like something big is happening mid-February. I feel like excited about it in a way that we're ready to hear what it is that's gonna start to come through. So I'd be super curious as to what kind of happens collectively, like with the world, I kind of feel like there's some like groundbreaking uh, news, groundbreaking uh, truths. I It feels like things kind of start to crumble in a way that they have needed to crumble at that point in time. And that density can shift to create a sense of lightness where there is a bit more fluidity in the movement. A lot of this has to do with the work that you've been doing to get really deeply honest with yourself, with life, to ask these big questions. Who am I? What am I here to do? So congratulations you because that is one of the bravest things that you will ever do. Continue to ask that question because we continue to evolve. But it's a very, very beautiful time to, I don't know, reflect on how far it is that you've come tend to your beautiful body if there's aches and pains and different sensations the mechanic or the, that aspect metaphorically will show you which parts um can be sort of tweaked and look at this as a nurturing thing it's sort of very similar to like discipline you want a little bit more discipline in your everyday life look at it like a self-love practice same with the detox and these other periods that or pieces that can feel a little bit more challenging initially what i love as well like i kind of want to like swim down when we enter into a new cycle and there's new learnings, there's like a dropping away. So the friends, some friends drop away houses, things, things that you've been connected to that have been teaching you. So what has this been teaching you? It's a question you asked a lot last year. At the moment, we can see what 
it was a part of those contracts or timelines or experiences really dropping away. And what that does is creates a little bit of a, an opening for new to start coming in. March, they're kind of flashing in as there'll be more sort of physical um or like experience, direct sort of experiences of this, like you might make a new friend or start a new course or it's it's physically stronger in March, the manifestation of these new timelines, but the excitement and the relief that comes in February with this like, oh my gosh, I, I'm really like grateful to be out the other side of this. Um, but what we will notice, and I want to share this message with you, so is that you don't feel overwhelmed, is that with any new contract or timeline, there is going to also be invitations for evolution and the continuation of your healing journey when you're looking at shadow work. So shadow work is something that I believe while you're here as a human being on earth, it's part of your mission. Um, it, it's, it's, it's how do you work with this in your everyday living? And whilst I'm not here to educate you about that, it can feel a bit like, oh my God, that came in quick. Um, the new teaching. So these new sort of shadowy aspects that come to your awareness, even though there's a lot of joy and excitement coming in, it can feel a bit like overwhelming if you're to judge this experience of becoming aware of other parts of you that need to step more deeply into the light. But if we can stay really curious throughout this month, I feel like we can um, almost like get off on the joy of how beautifully powerful we are and these gifts and abilities we have to be able to transform our energy and I feel like there's like a fire and a strength that actually comes with this. It's an extremely intuitive time. Um, as always, I feel like the call or the pull to really deepen this relationship with instinct and turn it into a full-blown guidance system is just going to get louder and louder and louder and louder and louder. So if you're not already working on that in your everyday life, um, it's time because these insights are going to come quite silently when the mind is nice and quiet and the body is super relaxed. So mindfulness practice, mindfulness practice, mindfulness practice. But I don't want you to get overwhelmed when you see these like, oh shit, it's like the closet gets open and you're like, oh crap, like a couple of little skeletons fall out on the floor and you're like, okay, well, what am I going to do with this? But if we can do this really gently, um, playfully, I almost feel like um, erotically, um, perhaps just... Perhaps there's some new ways that you can work with this energy now that makes it feel less serious and a little bit more light. We do want to stay nice and light, um, connected to our light. I feel that there's been like comfort in the darkness, in the cave, in the womb, and this kind of like coming out or rebirth or into the, the world is that it can certainly feel like super bright in the, in the beginning. And it's like, whoa, I just like slowly need to adjust, but I want you to stay connected to that as like, uh, your natural self, um, is love. I want you to remind yourself of that all the time. I am love. I am the light. You know, it's your, it's who you really are at your core. And I feel like there's a really kind of a calling to come back to that and to acknowledge all of those little edges where you might be actually more afraid of your light than you are your darkness. I feel most of you that are here are doing your shadow work um, very openly and very willingly, but sometimes it can feel like you're on a little bit of a hamster wheel and you don't get to experience your light as much as you would like to. So it's always there. You can always uh, set a time aside and set a time so set time aside to connect with your light um to ask your guides to um you know allow this to be a really felt experience um i do feel like there's invitation to really lean quite deeply into spirit this month uh i can see like big aspects around ra there's sort of like this egyptian sort of a theme coming in so perhaps there's sort of a turnover with these timelines where um some of these older deities and beings when you were looking at like Thoth and Thor, some of these sort of um, more ancient archetypal characters, their teachings can be really helpful and beautiful right now. Um, deep connections to like ancient knowledge and wisdom. Some of that can be just connected through sitting with a tree that's been alive, you know, 500 times longer than you have. And 
just connecting, um, experiencing your light in the company of other can be a really healing thing as well right now. So with uh, your partner, um, with friends, with your guides, this sort of intentional setup to connect with um, your own love and to share your love with other in sort of more intimate um, spaces can be really, really healing. I'm just going to have a little sip of my coffee. <laughs> Tea, actually. For those of you that have sort of been feeling like you're walking up hill um, with like a sort of like a heavy weight, that lightness that gives you an opportunity to stand at the top of this climbed mountain before the next reality sort of starts to come trickling in. It's really important that you kind of collect yourself and make time for reflection before you leap into the new experience. Reflection is where I see sort of a deep integration and the integration is where you are almost like strengthen your wisdom so that it can be translated into the physical reality whether that is passed on through friends or your business or your community or into your food whatever that intelligence is is that it can really become a part of your life and that you won't need to kind of backtrack and revisit these um, experiences that you have transformed but i do feel like we're kind of almost moving into a space where i want to start to close this off uh, and open up to any other information that might be necessary for the month of February. I'm mean, hearing the words like, do your own thing, do your own thing. I, I like that. And I also feel that there's a, I can almost sometimes like the silence, I believe is something really beautiful that we, we all ought to spend more time in if we can. I, for myself anyway, the silence is such a uh, direct depiction of what's going on inside of my body. You know, how busy is my mind? What emotions do I need to process? It's like, yet, connect this up, please. There can be like a deep longing that comes with the acknowledgement of the truths that have come to the surface for you that if not checked and spent with as like sacred information and permission to take time with this vision can get you down because you're not there and can get you down because where where is it all? Where's the lover? Where's the best friend? Where's the thing? It's like... It's less about what's going on out there for the interim and more about how you are showing up for you and what's going on internally when you close your eyes and you enter into that silence. And for some of you, that's going to feel like deep integration. For some of you, it's going to be acknowledging some of those patterns or programs that feel a little bit more automated to be like, well, if it's not all working out for me, um, you know, what's wrong with me? And I feel like this kind of emphasis on precision is coming back and they're showing it to me like a golden band um, or like a bangle or a bracelet. It's, it's sort of to be able to roll with this and staying connected to that light and the precision and the perfection of how things are out there and, and how that reflects inside. But what it is that you choose to do about your awareness is everything. And this emphasis on the present moment and trusting the perfection of how it all looks out there is what's going to keep you in your body. It's going to keep you fueled. It's going to keep things silent enough because you are trusting. You lean into it without the fear or the worry like consuming you. Whereas that in where that intuitive guidance can come through like really easily and give you the next step that it is you know, that you are ready to take. And so for some of you, again, that's going to mean a dial up of the energy and the vibration. You don't have to approach the raising of your vibration purely spiritually. Remember, we can access the body and the being from all different angles. So you can approach it from the physical side. You can do a physical cleanse and get back into, um, you know, running up hills if that's what brings you joy. It can be an emotional piece that you are going to start dancing again. It can be... Uh, a mental piece where you learn different tools like NLP or or how to train your mind to focus on a candle when it's you know to stay focused and centered and 
it can be, it's the little pieces that we sort of start to apply to our everyday life that helps us feel a little bit more fluid. And fluidity is something that I feel connected to the throat, this teachings that will be coming from the water, the spirit of the water, um, our connection to the element of the water uh, is, is, is coming into what I would say like a big theme this year. And I'm kind of just like tracing around the surface of this, but water is something that I feel... Um, unusually is is very um deeply connected to this key in the throat and the truth speaking uh and so i feel like there's going to be teachings for everybody in that regard and this can be like ice bathing and it can be jumping into the river it can be getting into the ocean every day it can be sitting with water it can be soaking your feet in water it can be talking to it connecting with it going and meditating by the river or the lake and, you know, intending for the lake to be a representation of your mind and trying to slow things down, observe your thoughts as they move past. Working with water right now can be really super insightful. Uh, I feel like there can be a lot of vision to come from the water if you are to sit with it. Intuitive guidance can come when you're by the water. Uh, it feels deeply nourishing and deeply relaxing way of connecting with your soul. They're bridging that connection and they're emphasizing it. Soul, water, water, soul. What's the connection there for you? I feel again, this is going to manifest differently across the board, but there are some teachings around that for you. I'm just going to close my eyes for a moment. Is there anything else that needs to be passed on? The intuitive message. Or for the year 2024. Okay, there's some aspects here around working on fear. I, I might have made a note about that. I did fear windows. I don't know what that was. I didn't go into that anymore. I just wrote down a couple of little pieces here. The vision they just shared with me was like a leopard down on the water drinking. And whilst you wouldn't imagine that the leopard would be afraid because of their position in the wild <laughs> not so many predators right but this position that the leopard's in drinking the water initially i thought oh you feel really relaxed and then i saw all the tensions through the back and then i watched the eyes moving all around kind of like um just aware of threats in the environment i don't know where they're going with this but it sort of feels like little fear pockets um tools if you don't have a tool to transform fear into um, light, because I would look at fear like something dense into something light that is an internal experience. Like it might be that you're um, afraid of being looked at in a particular way, or you're afraid of um, introducing yourself to other people because you don't know what to say. These kinds of fears can be amplified at this time when we go into a very new timeline collectively because there is a lot of new and it can feel slightly overwhelming if the nervous system isn't being taken care of. So again, that kind of like mechanic piece coming through, but what can you do to support your nervous system um, daily? I sort of feel like there's a lot of you that's going to be like changing around your supplements and things, um, just committing to that monthly uh, massage, starting yoga again, uh, intentionally turning your phone off going putting your feet down on the ground and perhaps this is even around education um around the nervous system and learning a new tool that is specific for you to not just cope better but to be in the world in the way that you desire to be um and listening to where that intuition guides you to in response to that because i do feel like that happens for people in different ways um and there are lots of different things that we can do now to support the nervous system. I'm not going to educate you with that. It's not my genius, but I do find it really interesting that when we listen to our body, it will tell us this sort of information. And then you can go read it in a book or find it online if you want confirmation. But it does know. It'll always ask. Um, I kind of feel like I want to wrap it up because I'm moving into that territory where I start to ramble a little bit. I feel mean saying this, but I wrote the question down. What are you going to do with that truth? I really love that. I feel like that's the punchline for today. Uh, when you're looking at a higher vibration, you're looking at a truer manifestation of who you are. Because at source, at, at absolute truth, 
you are the universe, you are love, you are light. And so any experience that is calling you to a higher plane of existence is happening for you. It doesn't mean it's comfortable, <laughs> doesn't mean it's void of challenges. But what I do also want to emphasize and where I'm really passionate is where the intuition is the thing that can guide you through that experience of not only jumping timelines, but how to navigate through something that is completely unknown. So if you are interested in developing your... Uh, intuition, your spiritual gifts, your psychic abilities, and uh, in a practical way that you will be able to continue to evolve as your life evolves, uh, you might be interested in the House of Mystics, which I am preparing enrollments for at the moment. This was a six-month course that is now a four-month course. It is all done online, so it doesn't matter where you are in the world, and I am getting a lot of support from one particular woman, Prue, who was going to come in and do a lot of body work um, to kind of support the top down teachings that I bring through. Uh, she's going to bring through the bottom up. <laughs> so a lot of sort of somatic practices, a lot of trauma release, a lot of pleasure inside of the body and learning how to feel, but also how to support um, this information to really deeply ground inside of your body. Um, and there'll be other guest speakers and, and kind of geniuses too. Um, so I'm putting together the curriculum for that. If that's something you want more information on, best kind of find me over at Instagram at your heart's path. All of this information today is about leading us. And I love this because it's where they're like dolphins and stuff. It gets really like fairy tale. Like the, the whole emphasis of this is a desire, a deep heartfelt desire and a desire of the spirit to experience more joy. We've had a dark, dark, dark time and joy is like medicine. Laughter is medicine. Try and shake off the seriousness. Work on your traps. I can feel like I got to do that. I got to start releasing energy from my muscles and start stretching it out. And I am making room for joy. For me, it's like right now anyway, it's bright yellow. It feels sparkly. I can hear the music coming from it. And intentionally bringing that into life is, is going to be like... I didn't even want to call it healing. It just feels like it makes it all worthwhile. And sometimes reminding ourselves of why we're here and what we're here to do, um, you know, it can kind of just help us stay on track. And that doesn't have to be like, you don't have to be an astronaut to make an impact here on earth. Simple is often best. <laughs> and it's simple because it's you. Um, so we make the best of, of what we have right now and trust that we've got everything that we need. I am available for readings. Um, yeah, find me on Instagram. I am just really happy to be back here with you. As you can tell, I love channel mode. It's like, I don't want to leave, <laughs> but I will see you all soon anyway. Thanks again for being here and, um, take care.